As reporters waited for the 155 scheduled touchdown, the skies opened up and rain began to fall. The queen is a hardy woman. The rain posed no problems for her. With umbrella in hand, she descended the steps of Air Force Two for a royal welcome. Governor and Mrs. Spellman, Seattle Mayor and Mrs. Charles Royer, and Boeing Chairman T.A. Wilson were among the many dignitaries to officially welcome the Queen and Prince Philip to Washington State. One of the youngest in the welcoming party, 13-year-old Catherine Spellman, daughter of the governor, presented the Queen with a bouquet of daffodils. There were no royal statements to the press or onlookers here, just a few moments in the rain. Then by limousine, they were on to Children's Orthopedic Hospital. Um, the vice consul is Ted McDowell. May I ask the reason for your call? It's been like this all day at the Seattle British Consulate. The phone hasn't stopped ringing. Uh, there's been a sort of gentle acceleration of activity uh, throughout the last few weeks. Number of phone calls, letters, um, yes, uh, inquiries as to where they can go and stand and see the Queen or what they should do if they, if they were to meet the Queen. Where do you go to meet Her Majesty? Well, the royal sprint through Seattle begins at Boeing Field. Just before 2 on Monday, the Queen and Prince Philip step from their Air Force jet to an official welcome from Governor Spellman and Boeing Chief T. Wilson. The royal couple spends just 15 minutes here, then they take to the road in an armored Secret Service limousine, a convoy of press and security cars tagging along. Hundreds of those tag-alongs will chase the Queen to Children's Orthopedic Hospital. This stop is said to be the main reason the Queen is coming to Seattle. She and Prince Philip have a special affection for disabled and handicapped children. Inside, Her Majesty will spend nearly an hour visiting with the young patients, either in their rooms or in a private recreation room where about a dozen children will be waiting. This is a private time for the Queen and Prince Philip. The public is not allowed and media coverage is limited. That's definitely not the case at the University of Washington, the royal couple's third stop and the only time the Queen will make a speech. More than 8,000 will attend. At 4.15, it's back on the road, this time to the Seattle Center. In the Flag Plaza Pavilion, the Queen makes her most public stop. It's open to everyone, but it's short. And then onto the monorail for a quick trip to the Westin Hotel for an upper crust party hosted by the governor. At 5.30, the last leg of the Royal Seattle Marathon begins. The finish line is Pier 48, where today final preparations were underway. Most important of all, asphalt pavers covering up the old railroad tracks to make sure the Queen doesn't trip as she takes her last steps on American soil. About 6 o'clock on Monday, Her Majesty and Prince Philip will board the Royal Yacht Britannia, which will be docked here at Pier 48. This is the last chance we'll have to see the royal couple on this visit to Seattle. And if weather permits, the two will sail off into the sunset on Elliott Bay on their way to Victoria, British Columbia. Brian Wood for Channel 7 Close Up.
In the early afternoon, the crowd started gathering, and right around 4 o'clock, close to 5,000 people were waiting, many waving tiny Union Jacks, many others in costume, representing some facet of British culture. As a group of Morris dancers, a traditional English dance practice, the band from Indian High School got ready to play tunes for the Queen and for the Prince. Then, almost on the dot, the motorcade entered the grounds, and a tiny blue figure of the Queen emerged. She was greeted by Mayor and Mrs. Royer and taken through a reception line of various other dignitaries. The Queen appeared relaxed, smiling often, and obviously enjoying herself. She wasn't here long, but those who saw her weren't disappointed. I was in London two weeks ago. I didn't get to see her, but I walked around Buckingham Palace. Here I went to London, didn't get to see her. I come home and I get to see her in my own hometown of Seattle. What more could you ask for? <laughs> How about you? Did you see her? Yes, I got a couple pictures of her and I would like more. Were you very excited? Yes. Very How about nice. you? Did you see her? I just saw her hat. <laughs> just delighted to see that much of her. <laughs> How about you? Did you see her? Yeah, I saw her get out of her car. You did? Yes. Yeah. Were you impressed? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I like her wild hat. <laughs> Were you surprised at how tiny she is? Yes, oh. she's pretty small. Gee. I think it was... It, like, it made me feel kind of dumb. Why was that? I would start trembling. You did? Why? Because she's the queen? Yep. She looked very regal and royal, and I was very impressed. She had a sort of a royal serenity about her that uh, was magnificent. What do you think of her hat? It was uh, very typical. Among the spectators, I'm just this helping lady, I come down British subject, with some other people and to shake. They needed help. There's no one to volunteer. Channel 7. Thank you.